Alright, Archon for Storm versus Kanka. Let's go. So, as a Storm, the first thing when you have a good block, usually, unless you have some other plan, it is a good idea to just uh, hit the range creep a few times, then place a remnant and have one remnant take two creeps. This way you will push the first wave into the tower, get level 2 fast, and usually be able to secure at least 3 or 4 creeps. With the advantage like that, uh, there is no, no need to play passively, go aggressive, either uh, harass Kunk a lot, or just push. Because if, if you're gonna just uh, try to take the last hits with the right clicks, Kanka is free to either mess up your last hits or just straight up deny them. In both cases, this isn't ideal. As you can see, none of the players so far yet have pulled the creeps away for a better position for last hitting and denying. And as players, at, at higher levels, at, actually at any levels, you should understand the concept of the creep aggro and abuse it all the time to gain a more favorable position for the creeps. As soon as you see Kanka use the cleave, you know he's gonna and involuntarily hit the range creep as well. So what you want to do is focus on denying that range creep. I understand that the tower is currently hitting your creeps, but uh, that's why you have the remnant, so you can multitask. So focus on clicking this your own creep to death, and in the meanwhile you can count the tower hits and place a remnant to secure the last hit when it has like two hits remaining for your creeps for your last hit to test so you can take it. And now as a result, this creep isn't denied yet, and that creep, uh, those creeps were not last hit correctly either. So, full, with full mana, there's a lot of leeway on how you can play the lane. So if you notice, if you notice these opportunities for for last hits, for denies, for pushing, you can always use their mana to secure those opportunities. And again, trying to deny the melee creep versus trying to deny the range creep is incorrect play because the range creep will always be worth much more. The correct play would be to just walk up, hit the Kanka a few times in the face, place a remnant to discourage Kanka from coming too close, and then do a few hits. A better Kanka would just cleave through you, but I will assume at a low of ours that would not go through their heads well either. So, so as long as you as you can notice more than the opponent notices, you will win lanes more consistently. So yeah, basically everything I said, which would help you win, not win, but uh, secure this first wave, was not done because it still decided to play with full mana instead of instead of utilizing them. And the thing is, Kanka, Kanka's base damage isn't that high. He's not gonna go crazy denying your stuff, but other heroes, uh, like Tony for example, they have insane high base damage, so against them, not playing, not using mana is gonna be a laning suicide for sure. So. Get into the habit to start pushing the wave and last hitting with the remnant. And that goes for, for any player that might be watching this video later. Just if you can secure the creep with the remnant, which, which would otherwise be contested and you're not sure, always do not be greedy. If you have a lot of mana, just use that mana. Your 
Now this is a situation where we don't need to use man because Kong is far away. Uh, the damage ticks are very consistent. So that's pretty simple. Those are the cases where we don't need to use remnant. All the other cases we have seen in these first few minutes, you have to use remnant. And again, the thing about Kunk is very easy to predict his uh, cleave usage. If the cleave is low, you can assume he will use the cleave to harass you. So always try to be near your own range creep to prep it for the deny. Okay, well, let's not rewind, like I can talk through here, um, okay, let's do rewind. So this part was fine, but what's happening now is that you know you're gonna very easily secure this range creep. So what you want to do is take that secure and prep yourself to black those creeps a little. And in the end, you will get a last hit. And as a bonus, with a, a little bit of blocking, those creeps will end up in your high ground again, maintaining the advantage you have for, for securing those last hits, for harassing Kanka, or again for denying your range creep when the counter inevitably cleaves. But instead no blocking was done and now the position is unfavorable. The range creep is in the enemy's high ground which is gonna be extra annoying to deal with because there's a mischance if you go from downhill and, and if you go go with the remnant to do a melee hit, then you, you're gonna get extra harassment. Against Kunkka, this, is, this isn't that bad, but, but again, we're talking about habits. Against Shadow Friend, you will eat three raises. Against Lina, you will get stunned. It's best to not even, not even get into these situations where unfavorable positions happen. And, and just because you missed a block, so as long as you can recognize that you had an opportunity to do some blocking and not get into this position. If you recognize those moments and execute them again, do it consistently, you will climb. Again, playing very passively, you can notice that Kanka uses cleave very 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 thoughtlessly so you will know every single time the creep is low he will use the cleave always position yourself near a range creep and in this particular matchup against this particular player you will get a deny every time and this might carry on to your other matchups where, where kankas are careless or or wind rangers with their power shots and again you know, you know kanka does, doesn't deal that much damage. All he can do is cleave you a couple of times. That's that's nothing compared to eating raises or, or necro skew. So you can afford to play aggressive in the middle of the creep wave. And you even have salve. Kanka doesn't have salve. If you would take one second to look at the items, you will notice that you have you as well have the economy advantage, so there is no reason for you to be so conservative with your moves. Just play aggressive. Establish that dominance, deny some creeps. And again, missed opportunity there. If you would just go up to Kanka's face, press a remnant, two things might happen. He will eat a remnant, and then that's free harassment for you. Or he will fall back, and you would be able to deny that that creep, and as well get some easy last hits without risking getting your tower in, in interfering with those last hits. In 
Okay, now, now the opposition is favorable. So let's see if the player can find ways to utilize it. Yeah, okay, now Kang is being careful. He specifically angled his cleave not to hit the range cleave. So, some things, things are getting heated right now. Yeah, many players have problems with the Vortex Combo. Now, before before you even think about Vortex Combo, the first thing is you gotta acknowledge the enemy's position. Right now it's very, very, very favorable. He's on your high ground, not his high ground. If it would be his high ground, then the Vortex might miss, you might lose vision, It's it would be very bad and unadvisable. But right now, if you would read the lane, read the, map, uh, read the opponent's map movements, one second, let's see. Like, you know his next move will be this creep. So what you do is you wait one second, you use the vortex, he will be pulled right here, in, in the middle of these two creeps, you can drop, drop a remnant, you can hit him, and then you can body block him as he retreats. So essentially, your Vortex combo will be full with the Remnant, and then you can Body Block and drop another Remnant, so that, that would add up to around 500 damage. And with the Kanka, who doesn't have self, might, might even buy you 3 minutes of farming, which might lead to a 1 lane. Just from one Vortex combo, it can lead to a 1 lane. But the moment has passed, and, and, and nothing happened. And again, the thing, if, if you're scared to play in the middle of the lane, even with the self, the opponents, better opponents, will always deny you those creeps. Like right now, Kanka sees this one, this, this little dude, getting his health lowered by the range creep, then the second range creep. It's a. I'm not saying it's an easy deny, but it's definitely not a hundred percent last hit for you. And against range creeps, you want you want this number to be hundred percent. So what you're gonna do? What you wanna do is you wanna retrace your steps a few seconds back. Notice that this range creep will be the target of the harassment, and just just super easily walk down to him, to his face, say what's up, buddy. And trap a remnant. Boom. Hit secured. Moving on. If the opponent decides to leave the lane to do some side farming or whatever, that's your cue to take all of those creeps and drag them all the way to the small camp. This way, you make a double stack, and well, essentially your farm is doubled. That, that's it, that's the tip. You're a trusty mate. And here, if you're not, if you're not bothering to block, if you're not doing this one task, you can still think of other tasks you can do, like it's 247. It would take roughly 5 seconds to walk to this spot, hit those creeps, and walk back. You're not gonna lose any lane creeps, and you're gonna make a stack for yourself later. So again, keep the eyes on the clock, try to spot some moments of opportunities to do extra things in the lane. Oh, okay, 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 you heard me, that's nice. Okay, good, good. I mean, we're witnessing the player learning as he goes, like, like, like for the first few levels, you, you definitely saw how Kanka's cleaves affect the range creep. 
And now after the two levels, you, you've noticed a pattern like, like, hey, Kanka cleaves, I can deny this range creep. And you start doing it. And that's very good. Learning through practice and observation. And again, the Vortex Combo. If you want to perform the Vortex Combo successfully, you gotta, you gotta after you click this Vortex, you gotta move a little and hit him so he's slowed and then the remnant connects. But if you're gonna set in place, he's just gonna walk out and the Vortex Combo will be simply wasted. Another thing about the skill build is Kanka, unless you're doing very well, unless you've been aggressive from the start, usually Kanka is not a kill lane. If it's not a kill lane, then focusing on overload is not gonna be good for your economy. Even taking Vortex, if you're not planning on harassing him, will be bad for your economy. I would advise against Kankas to skip Vortex, keep the overload at level 1, just, just take Remnants and, and focus purely on farming. Okay, Kogda's gonna cleave now, let's see how this goes. Okay, he's gonna he's preparing those creeps for the cleave. Okay, that's that's smart. That's smart. Missed opportunity for a vortex there. And again, playing too passively, way too passively. It's it's three it's uh, 328, there is no reason for you not to go into the middle of the creep wave, do a few hits, clear this wave, make the creeps go to tower. So what's, what's gonna happen, what you can do is you can make those creeps go to the tower, you're gonna glyph them, and as they are being glyphed, they're not taking damage. What this means is that the second wave, the 330 wave, will go all the way up to the Kanka's tower, which means that Kanka will be trapped on his high ground. Which means you are free to take the rune. Bam, rune secured. Just like that. And even here, you can still use the glyph to mess with his last hits. Because at, as the rune timer approaches, those last hits become... Not last hits, the taking the rune becomes very important. Smarter Kankas would see you leaving and they would push the wave immediately. And what would happen is as you're still taking this little trip, those creeps would be pushed in your tower, you would miss at least two last hits worth of experience, which wouldn't be an issue if you yourself have taken the initiative and pushed those creeps into his tower before walking out. And then you have no issue taking this rune on the bottom because Kanka would be busy anyway. Some planning ahead will usually lead to a lot of correct moves later. Again, missed opportunity to block. I would say for homework, practice wave clearing the creeps with the remnants. And make it a bit of blocking, make it a habit. Because those are definitely lacking and, and causing you to lose more lanes than you realize. Oh, that's gonna hurt. One thing to also keep in mind is that 
If you're in danger of dying, and the opponent blows their only disable, that's your cue to teleport away. Either to the base or to the tower, but you're free to use the teleport and be safe. Okay, it worked out anyway. No, no, what are you doing? No, get back to base. Hey, let me run out, take the rune. This rune will not be enough for you to return to the battlefield. If you're low and the, rune, and the rune will not bring you to full, it's always better to... If both moves cost the exact movement and resources, it's always better to go to the base to make a full refill. Observer sent, that's good. Vision, vision must be maintained. Okay, because Kanka is so passive, it actually worked out with with the with the rune pickup. Yeah, I suppose against passive opponents who do not plan to put in a kill on you, you can play a little bit more greedy with your health and health resources against uh, Lina, Shadow Friend, Sky Wrath. If they see you with uh, sixty percent, sixty five percent health and no battle, they they would go ham on you. And that little move with the rune, and you coming back to the lane at level 5, that would be death for you. Yeah, never mind. Just as foretold. Well, I, I just hope uh, my explanation made sense for, for, for the future. For avoiding these scenarios. Super easy thing to remember as you're teleporting from the fountain. Always use a spell so you can arrive at the overload charge. Makes wave clearing easier, faster. As you're hitting those creeps, it's always a good idea to keep an eye on the status of your own creeps to see how soon you might need to return to the lane to grab those incoming creeps. So ideally, I wouldn't even bother with this camp. I would just wait here, take those creeps, then drag them to the camp. Essentially, using the same amount of mana for getting twice the last hits. That was nice. No whining now. Textbook opponent getting overconfident against a double damage rune. Well played. In the cases where the opponent is dead for a while, it's, it might be a good idea to head into the mid lane and do some hits on the tower. Especially with double damage. But, uh, I mean, Kanka is 2 seconds away from respawning, so it's not as relevant here, just in general. Against Heroes that can clear waves really fast, Kanka Shadow Friend, you don't have the time to utilize this neutral camp here. Small camp is all gonna ha have time to do. So, 
that's a mistake. After a small camp, you might want to head back to the to the, to the middle lane to collect those incoming creeps. Yeah, two groups missed. One thing you might attempt here, not right now, but in general, is in this situation, there are three creeps and the enemy mid laner who is extremely out of position. I'm not saying you can kill him, but you can definitely deal some damage. So if you would just uh, face him head on, uh, do a vortex combo and then get out, take this rune, he would be quite significantly wounded, which is essentially a preparation for a kill if any of the supports rotate later. Or if the Kanka doesn't heal up, then you can do it later. Just basically recognize this opportunity that that you have an advantage right now at this moment. And try to use this advantage to deal some a little bit of damage. That's it. Okay, I don't think we're gonna see anything new in the mid lane in the early game stage. Let's skip forward a bit. Okay, I can see the safe laner's tower fell, which means the enemy is free to roam, free to harass you, free to converge in the mid lane, reducing your safe space to farm. So you might want to play more conservatively and Okay, I don't know what just happened, but it was extremely greedy. I am glad for you that it worked out, but please, for the love of God, unless you're 100% sure you're getting those kills and, and remain safe, only then do you, do you jump in and, and do those, those greedy movement plays. Otherwise, there was a really, really high chance you, you would have died on that tower. And the tower is dead anyway, even after successful uh, redirection of the kills. So, what I'm saying is, the risk versus reward factor is extremely not on your side. If you had di if you had died, the mid lane tower the mid lane tower is gone, the rune control is gone, and and you losing like 400 gold or something will delay your orchid for two more minutes. Yes, it worked out. Should have it worked out? Absolutely not. Was it worth it? Absolutely not. Moving on. This will come in handy. Bounty. And now with the fresh orchid, the first thing you do is go hit jungle camps.
I think, I think that's it, I don't need to elaborate. Like, the, the thing with the players, uh, lower MMR players, it, it's not that they're bad, I'm not saying they're bad. Everyone's playing at their skill level, I'm bad as well. I'm saying they're only recognizing opportunities to do something when it's literally in their face. And I'm not trying to be demeaning, I'm sorry if it comes across this way, but, but let, me, let me elaborate. Like, unless there is a cue that something needs to happen, nothing will happen. And what I mean is that Storm was hitting jungle, but as soon as he sees Moonlight Shadow, he's thinking, oh hey, Moonlight Shadow, we can make some plays. The same goes for for the smoke. A, a carry is getting a jungle, along comes the support, and smokes up the carry, and carry's like, oh hey, look, time to gang, that's nice, we have smoke, we're invisible. And the thing is, the mindset should be always that you can gank, regardless of the moonlight shadow, regardless of the smoke. You're walking somewhere and you think, oh nice, the enemy carries a lot, I can go gank. You don't need to wait for smoke, you don't need to wait for, for the moonlight shadow. Just keep your eyes on the minimap and look for those opportunities, because they're there all the time. And you don't need any extra encouragement from items, spells or allies to do so. See, see, that was nice, that was really nice. And you didn't even need any Moonlight Shadows or any smokes to do so, because Kanka was farming low ground with no vision. He would have seen it first, he would have jumped first, he would have gotten, gotten a kill anyway. And that's how you should play, throughout the mid game. Look for opportunities yourself without relying on smokes or Moonlight Shadows. No need to zip for support, either walk or just don't don't come at all. Let 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 your supports deal with CM. Save your man if there's additional variable presenting like, like a punch in this corner. You might want to save mana for him, because CM CM was definitely dead. Okay, that was nice, that was nice. After every single team fight, when they're low on mana, low on health, you gotta think what you wanna do next. Like right now, it's uh, 7.15, the rune isn't spawning for a while. I would say just, just go base, make a full refill, so that you are ready to perform a pickoff at any moment you spot an opportunity, like for example, looking at the mid-map here, the Void is carelessly pushing bottom, the Chronosphere was used before, so you know he's a free kill if you can get a champ on him. And for, as a Storm with an Orchid, you always have to be prepared to make a champ on anyone. So the more time you're spending hitting jungle camps with no health, no mana, is is all this time wasted, not being able to champ anyone.
Yeah, so this was an entire full minute of you playing with half mana, half health, not being able to perform a pickoff should the need arise. That's exactly what I was talking about. Like, if the void would show up right now on this lane to take this free farm, you wouldn't be able to kill him because you don't have enough mana. I mean, you might very, very slightly, but it's always better to be sure, isn't it? The clarities are there as a tool. If if you're if after a team fight you're you're say like thirty percent mana, in that case one two clarities would get you to full and ready to fight. But if you end a fight with like less than twenty percent of resources, it's always the best 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 uh, play to just teleport back to base and be ready next time. And again, your your map movements with a hero, with the orchid who has kill potential on most most other heroes, is to hit those jungle creeps. But if you take a moment, as you're watching this this replay of me of my reviewing it, if you take a moment at this particular second, what do you see on the mini map? You you did make a correct move of pushing those creeps up to the enemy's tower. That's very good. But if you would think a little bit ahead, your mind would tell you that someone from the enemy team eventually has to come to defend that tower, take those creeps. And that someone will probably be Void. Can you kill Void? Yes, you can. What's your decision then? It's not to hit those jungle creeps. It's to walk closer to the top lane. So that's whenever Void inevitably shows up. And we can already see on the minimap that he plans to show up. You jump, you kill him. Because you have conditioned him to come to the top. You have essentially baited him and did not claim the kill. Look at that. Little juicy Void just waiting to be taken at your earliest convenience. No health, MOM, that's that's so easy. And again, the same thing I said earlier, the only time plays happen is if you have conditions, extra conditions like the Moonlight Shadow. Which should not be the default state of mind. Okay, just just a bad fight. I don't think I have any comment on that. Bad fights happen. Of course, there are things that can condition the fights to be a little better. And as a storm, we can always, if if right here we were killing Shadow, uh, uh, not Shadow, um, 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 Sand King. As we were killing Sand King, there were, I think, four heroes hitting on him, so that that means that there there was no need for you to be in the melee range as well to be hooked. So you, you might have wanted to uh, be a little bit back, because you can expect Budge, Conquer. They have great initiation to, to join the fight, so just a, a little bit more careful. Might have bought additional time, but I think regardless, that team tight would have been lost. So, so don't sweat about it too much. Oh. 
Again, hitting jungle camps. And then, yes, getting a kill on a CM, but may I direct your attention to the minimap again and see this little green arrow showing himself to you in all his glory. Instead of still walking to the camps, can do the same thing I have talked about earlier, is to condition this void to go to those creeps and then claim a kill. Because as we can all realize, killing void is way more impactful than killing ACM. And as a hero with a pickoff potential, you always gotta wait in which targets you might you wanna hunt. So yeah, all of those little small mistakes during the early game and the mid game have accumulated into enemy team's advantage. I mean, looking at the draft, I would say they they have a better draft, so they are bound to win. But if we made better moves during the early game, during the mid game, we might have swung, swung, swung enough of a space difference to actually claim the match before any of, any of them got seriously fat, but, but I think uh, at this point with the 10k network difference, it's it's the point of no return. Past the point of no return. Itemization looks good. Orchid into BKB to survive Chronosphere and Kanka's combo and CM says spells and CK spells. Yeah, the items look good, nothing to comment on there. One more thing. As you're respawning, again, you have Fountain region, there's no need to walk, you can zip. You zip past the main building, you can zip past the base towers while spamming bottle, and you would save a lot of seconds and still have full mana. As a storm, you only walk when you have below 90% mana pool. Okay, I don't think we're gonna see anything useful from from this replay, from what's left to see. So let's let's just skip forward a bit. Oh, Bloodstone, not BKB. Okay, I guess if you don't eat Chronos, a bit riskier than BKB, but doable, doable.
Yeah, at this point, with with the 9k gold advantage, and every single one of them have ways to disable storm. It's it's not, it's it's no longer a good idea to look for pickoffs because of how easily they can jump into those pickoffs and help whatever target storm chooses. The best place to just split push and try to get the opponents to fall back a little, which the storm does here, so that's good, that's good, that's a great play. Yeah, I think we can end this replay analysis here. So, to summarize what went wrong. There was a lot of passivity in the early game against Konka, which might have led to moments where you could have increased your farm, but, but it didn't. Then the very, very common mistake of being too passive with the Orchid during the mid game. When you could have killed their void over and over again. And I think those are the big ones that, that led to the loss of this match. Which would maybe uh, would be maybe a loss anyway. But you could have de definitely tried for a snowball approach by keeping the void down. And yeah, and then there's those all of those small mana management mistakes, which which again might accumulate over time into more wins. So yeah, I think that is it. Thank you for watching and good luck.